Hey everyone, we're still at CES 2020 and we're at the Fantech suite now looking at some new cases. I think given the response to our P400A review, this video should get a lot of interest from some of you. So P400A we listed as I think best overall case for 2019. I think we also gave it best airflow. Uh, so it got, it, it got a lot of acclaim from us last year. The P500A is a new one that we're looking at. It's got really similar front, a couple changes. And then there's also a P300A, which is a revision of the P300 with also the, the A portions of the ultrafine mesh on the front. Before that, this video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. We've trusted Linode as our web host since 2012 and recommend it for excellent technical and customer support, reliable uptime, and a clean interface. Aside from cloud hosting, Linode.com recently added GPU hosting plans for machine learning and neural net use, built with RTX 6000 GPUs and 10 gigabit per second network speeds. They're also starting to deploy Epic CPUs in their servers. Sign up for Linode.com Cloud Computing with code GNEXUS20 for a $20 credit or click the link in the description below to visit Linode.com slash GamersNexus. I forgot to mention when we were filming in the suite a couple of things about the P500A and some of the other cases, so we'll just drop these notes in there in editing when we run across them. P500A is a larger version. It's built on the P600 chassis, so if you know the tooling from the P600, you already know the interior for the P. 500A. For cooling configuration, there's a version at $130 with three DRGB fans at the front. There's another configuration at $100, one front, one back fan, and they're both black. The P500A also benefits from dual system compatibility if desired, though it does complicate the thermal solution. If you're using this, the second system would be top mounted with a kit, just like the P600S with its upgrade kit. Otherwise, March availability, and again, P600, P600S owners, you get an airflow option now, which we've had a lot of requests for reviews of the P600 series chassis. We never got around to one. Uh, and frankly, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know how it would have gone given our performance focus. So we will be looking at this one though. This is definitely more up our alley where uh, there's no, no question about it. We do have a, uh, a bias towards performance. So we'll look at this for airflow. The front I asked about just out of curiosity. So there's a bit of a design here. And the question I had was, was this a design focus first? objective or a function focus objective for uh, for kind of getting that indent in the front. And I guess it's supposed to add structural support since you have a wider mesh than you do on the P400A, for example. So that's March. Price is 13100 for that one. We'll look at it separately. You can wait for a review on that. P400, you already know. P300A is just a smaller version of the P400A. It's built on the P300 chassis. We showed previously, I think it was last year, some cyber power cases that were uh, built on as a P350, I believe, from Fantex as well. And this one's another mesh front. For this one, it's supposed to be $60, so it's a budget-oriented. The P400A came in at a really good price, especially with the sad disappearance of the RL06 from Silverstone. Don't know what happened to that case, but it disappeared off the market and the prices ballooned like crazy. So the P400A came in and mostly replaced that in our recommendation stack. But if you've been trying to get something cheaper, which we've had a hell of a time finding an actually good Budget case, so I hope when we test this, it delivers because you start looking at the $60 price point, you get uh, you get the Fractal Focus G, which is garbage, unless you modify it by adding extra fans and then it's no longer a $60 case, then it's an $80 case. Or you get stuff like, I guess you could go DIY PCs onto O. It's always a great option at $30. So I, I want to do more budget case reviews, but most of them suck. And so I'm, I'm hoping, don't let me down, Fantex. I'm, I'm hoping the P300A comes in as a $60 option that uh, performs well. Ultimately, we kind of know baseline performance based on paneling. So it should be more of the same if you throw the same types of fans in there. I mean, you have distance change with the tower cooler location versus the fans. So that's always going to change performance, but and then the amount of fans too. But that's my hope is that we can have a budget case to to kind of fulfill the, the low end market. I think we were recommending 270 yards for like the last five years otherwise. And this one, uh, 60 bucks, like I said, and end of month for launch for that one, or availability anyway, launches immediately. And then uh, the, I guess the next one we can talk about is the Enthu Pro 2. The next one, I'm not gonna spend, I keep getting shocked at all these suites at CES, all the static electricity. You need mod mats in here from us. So I wanna spend less time on the Enthu Pro 2 but I did want to bring this up first. This is something we've kind of talked about. I know we're, we've been dragging our feet on the fan testing, but the setup Fantex has is pretty similar to what I would do. They've got a, a really, really mini wind tunnel. I don't know, maybe 
maybe an eight inch wind tunnel or so hooked up to a Noctua fan on the front, looks like a Noctua server fan. And then they're just attaching the different filters from or different mesh front materials from different companies to the front of that. This one happens to be from the M3 Pro 2. But the goal of the test is to just hook up a, an anemometer. So anemometers, digital anemometers on the table. It's hooked up to a wire to the actual anemometer reading the wind coming out of the other side. And the setup is a fan with the case in front of the fan. So it's instead of trying to do a push through, which we've done as well, you're doing a pull since that's what you're doing with the real case test. Air comes in, goes through the wind tunnel, hits the anemometer, and you get an FPM or per LPM number, either one, same thing. So that's linear feet per minute flow. And what's shown here is more or less what we would expect. Uh, you get a couple percent difference between some of the standard, like, I mean, it's, it's extremely identifiable. Mesh of IC, for example, on the table is one of them. But you get a couple percent difference between those. We've shown them as well with some of our, I think we did some with the P400A. We briefly did a test with uh, white and black for the paint and saw no real difference in FPM. And FPM is useful as a measurement if you want to just look at a quick absolute airflow number without getting into the quagmire of thermals. Because when you're talking about thermals, especially with a computer, a non-TTV computer where there's a million variables, motherboard's got all these voltages, you don't really have the accuracy or the resolution to gauge how much uh, two extremely similar materials differ in performance. So FPM can be useful for that. Once you extrapolate to real world, those differences can disappear or they can amplify depending on the rest of the case because you start dealing with obviously multiple fans and the entire rest of the case, the positioning of the CPU, you get weird stuff like motherboard orientation on some of the cases. So you can't extrapolate just a, a linear 10% more airflow is 10% more better. It's not really as simple uh, as that, but it's a pretty cool demo and I like seeing it because Logitech kind of did stuff with their old uh, click latency testing at trade shows. And it was a good way to demo, hey, this is all the technology we, we talk big game about. And let's try and figure out how we can actually illustrate that it's not just marketing bullshit. So I like seeing that. Anyway, this is the a fabric that was on demo for the FPM testing. And as you can see, just goes on the front there. The test was showing with and without a dust filter. Common test we do for our own. Uh, case reviews as well, just remove the dust filter and often see improvement, but then you end up with sacrifice of potentially more dust in the system. For the system, it's no fans included. This is a higher end case. You supply your own fans. Uh, it's kind of something we've been talking about in the Lee and Lee coverage as well. So I'd be curious to hear from viewers if when you hear about these higher end cases, if you prefer fans to come with them or not, because some of the companies we spoke with the show, Silverstone included, get into the, uh, the question of, but without fans, I can't check all the marketing check boxes on Newegg. So your case shows up next to another one, you have an uninformed customer who sees zero fans and three fans that suck. Uh, they buy the one with three bad fans. So the question is, do you prefer buying cases without fans? And I think on the Silverstone video, most people were saying they prefer, prefer to supply their own fans for the higher end cases. But I'd be curious to see what the Enthu audience says about it. One of the more interesting ideas we had for the Enthu related to its multi-system support, it natively supports two power supplies, but you could easily go for one PSU, an ATX system, a mini ITX system, and then socket a Ghost Canyon NUC into the vertical PCIe slot if using a reference video card. So you'd have three computers in one larger tower case. For the rest of the specs, it's modeled after the 719 chassis, 719 tooling, $130 price point, and I think we can move on to the, just quickly, some of the metallic gear stuff that, uh, that was requested for coverage from some of our Twitter users this year. So the last two cases are metallic gear. I was gonna try and make a joke about this, but I mean, come on, we know. Uh, this is the Neo Pro. Neo Pro is supposed to be a cheaper case. I, I mean, it's got holes in it. I'm not gonna do the whole mesh spiel because that's obviously not really the point. The, the point is to look kind of like that other case on the market, except instead of a lot of metal and aluminum and um, I don't know, $8,000 eight core CPUs that are not at all worth the price. This one goes for plastic, it's 60 bucks. Uh, it's supposed to be two fans, so one front, one rear, both blackout fans, and they're built on uh, some of the chassis that we saw previously for Metallic Gear. So 
as is actually the, the matrix next to them. They're all three on the table here. Um, so for, for this, I, I don't really have any comment on what I think of it, because I, I feel like this is almost more of a meme or a joke. I'm not sure how many of these will, will move to buyers. This one's a little more interesting to me. We've seen this from uh, similar from Inwin, except it was really not that great of a, an implementation. What Inwin did was kind of a, a almost dot matrix LED type pattern as well. I think there's might've been on a back panel, but the LEDs were kind of dim and the paneling coloring was not really matched very well. It was a prototype. I don't know really what happened to that case. Uh, for the Fantax version, it's a non-customizable uh, through software solution. So you can customize it to the extent that there's some pre-configured settings like this one. We've got B-roll of others, but um, it eliminates the software, which on the upside, like I was saying, the Fantax is a good thing because you eliminate all the security vulnerabilities that some of the other software on market has, like ASUS. You eliminate the ongoing, never-ending maintenance. Um, performance concerns, just generally buggy, garbage software, but the, ups the downside is there's limited customization. So I'd kind of like to see this idea expanded, but I don't know a clean way to do it other than maybe partnering with a motherboard company or something so that you could program in uh, what each dot looks like. So you could maybe do some pixel art. That's what I'd like to see for a direction for that. But anyway, that's the Neo Matrix. It is an interesting case. It's probably one of the cheaper implementations I've seen of this idea at uh, $100, one included fan, DRGB in the back, and um, otherwise it's all familiar tooling from previous shows where we've covered the Metallic Gear stuff. So that's it for this one. Subscribe for more as always. Thanks for watching. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, and I'll see you all next time.